Yeah, my name is uh, Thomas Kolbusch. I'm vice president of Kotima Coding Machinery. Kotima Coding Machinery is working in deep tech. So we build equipment for printing, coding, and laminating. So uh, these machines we see on the, on the background here, is that your machines? Yeah, uh, we work in different areas. So most of our pilot lines are being used for um, lab to fab development. We're working specifically with startups with technology clusters like here the LTFN in Tesla Leaky, um, on products like organic photovoltaics, on nano printed surfaces, but we're also working on uh, new technologies like green hydrogen and battery technologies. Uh, so, what are these machines we see behind you? The click and code. Yeah, the, the click and code is a patented uh, Kotima system. This click and code system can be adjusted in size. We can add additional features at a later stage of the operation. So the customer can start with a standard configuration and then we can add additional features at a later stage. So that's our most versatile, flexible, patented uh, lab system we offer to our customers. Uh, and uh, the roll-to-roll nano imprint? Yeah, the, uh, the roll-to-roll nano imprint um, is the system to do roll-to-roll -roll nanostructured uh, surfaces, for example, for optical light guides, for surface modification, and this system is used by the display industry, uh, by label industry for specific features. And here we have dedicated um, uh, systems. We also now installed at uh, the LTFN Tesla Leaky. Nice. Uh, so you enable all kinds of future technologies that are going to be exciting, like uh, uh, flexible solar, uh, yeah. flexible OLEDs. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this we do already, if you th speak about flexible solar, uh, this we do already since 2003, working on first uh, OPV devices. We did the first printing unit for OLEDs in 2008 uh, at a university in Finland. Uh, so we are always very early at the technology stages people are working on. So what's the, the way to get this to mass production? so the whole world gets impacted by this technology. The way to mass production is our approach, not only to build equipment. We have Europe's biggest R&D center with uh, 12 pilot lines. We're doing a lot of pre-engineering for our customers. We have a whole service range for R&D development. Uh, so the combination of equipment, R&D services, and also our global network is the key. Nice, uh, what kind of discussions do you have here? at the Nanotechnology Conference. Uh, we have discussions here since 2008, um, already um, on new technologies, specifically on the topic of OPV, uh, specifically on the topic of green hydrogen, uh, fuel cells and batteries. And we are focusing here also on networking with our RTO partners, finding new project proposals for Horizon Europe. That's a big effort here in these next days. Uh, do people have new ideas what they want to do with your technology all the time? Um, yeah, I think that's the key uh, of, of the company. We are always walking around, we are speaking to people, specifically here from, uh, from the R&D institutes, to find new ideas where you can use roll-to-roll -roll printing, coding and laminating technologies. Um, what, what do you think about, uh, like let's say, I want to have solar on my roof. Is it going to happen? Can I just like get this kind of uh, solar soon? Um, it's, it's happening. Uh, we work together very closely here with the uh, university, with uh, Stergos Logothetis. We work with OET, which is using our equipment here at LTFN. And we are already um, shipping solar cells to customers globally, specifically on the OPV topic. And here, OET has new technologies in the surface modifications of these solar cells. So they are not only on the roof, they are also in agriculture being used in a lot of different applications. Is it crucial to have uh, efficiency that's at the level that makes sense per dollar for people to just say, I want a billion units, you know? 
Uh, I think the more important thing is efficiency over the whole day, where OPV has advantages against uh, silicon technologies. The other advantage is it's lightweight, uh, you can design every form you need, and it's a printed material, so you also can do printed structures which fit into architectural designs, for example. Because uh, you want to have something that costs a few thousand dollars, you cover the whole house, and then you're good for 10 years, and then you just switch them again when the efficiency is being a whole bunch more? Um, yeah, for sure, that's, uh, that's one approach. The approach is also to have smaller, lightweight devices for energy harvesting, uh, for example, powering the Internet of Things, uh, powering um, standard devices. So you're not using electricity, you're directly using solar energy uh, to power your devices in your house or in your car and other places. Uh, what's the other big use cases you see? Solar, OLED? Yeah, the, the biggest use case at the moment in Europe is green hydrogen. Uh, with all the surroundings, political surroundings we have, there was already a big initiative on uh, green hydrogen from the European Commission. And now with the topic of uh, getting faster out of uh, fossil fuels, especially gas supply from uh, Russia, which is not taking place anymore, uh, green hydrogen will be the big hype topic here to 2030 or 2050 for sure. How do you enable the green hydrogen with your technology? Uh, we do uh, catalyst coatings on the membrane for PAM electrolyzers. So we are at the moment at the forefront on these production lines, roll to roll, which are being already installed at the moment in Europe, but also in North America. Can you talk a little bit more about this catalyst membranes and all this? Yeah, we, um, our company is working in fuel cells and electrolyzers since uh, 20 years. So we are able to cast the membranes, so we can produce membranes which are being used for electrolyzer technologies and fuel cells. And of course, on these membranes, you have to bring the catalyst from both sides, and that's also a coating application. And this we do since 20 years. And we are now going into, let's say, two meter of working with, in the operation, faster speed, industrialization of processes, including quality control, using AI to get very good results. So you could, in theory, roll-to-roll uh, -roll print the solar panel, the OLED lighting, the fuel, fuel cell uh, hydrogen yeah. system. Yeah. The whole thing can be printed. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically the idea, and that's the thing we are doing. Um, and of course, if you use uh, solar energy, you have to store solar energy. Um, and this, uh, the best way to do it is to use electrolyzers uh, to make a hydrogen. So the, the whole green tech future is printed. Um, it's printed or coated. Uh, that's basically the idea. And it's on flexible materials. And it has to be scaled up, specifically in green hydrogen, as soon as possible. Otherwise, we are not reaching the, the uh, net zero targets the European Commission wants to have in 2050. How's the efficiency for something that you do compared to something that's mass manufactured in China that's like uh, molded kind of things and stuff? Um, in electrolyzer technologies, we still have a big advantage against uh, the Chinese producers uh, because we are already at a wider working width, higher speed, higher quality. Um, if you look into solar applications, uh, it's compatible because I think a lot of uh, production technologies will come back from China to Europe. So we're speaking about a local European production to be independent from any supply problems or other problems uh, here in Europe. Yeah, independence is a, yeah. is a good thing to have sometimes yeah. when it's yeah. unpredictable political uh, environment in the world. Uh, so you want to have stuff happen in Europe. Yeah. And this is the place to be right now in Europe. The Nanotechnology Conference is the yeah, most exciting thing right now. Yeah, because we have here the university, you have solar, you have wind energy, and you have already activities uh, from the LTFN and OED on uh, electrolyzers and fuel cell technologies. In Denmark, they're talking about doing huge islands for wind power, and they want to also put them in the hydrogen and ship it over and stuff like that. And I just spoke 
uh, with these guys over there in Saudi Arabia. They also want to do solar and yeah. then hydrogen and ship it. Uh, yeah, the uh, if you if you see hydrogen, um, every country who is using electrolyzer technologies is using renewables to make green hydrogen will be totally independent from fossil fuel. So they will be also independent from, from other areas where fossil fuels is being produced. On the other hand, countries like Australia, like Saudi Arabia, uh, like Denmark, either have a lot of solar energy or wind power, and then can produce hydrogen and export it to countries which don't have so much uh, solar power, for example. That's also a big opportunity uh, in Africa if you see the uh, connection between Africa and the European Union already being discussed, we have big solar farms in Morocco and Tunisia and then shipping the hydrogen uh, to Europe. So it will be complete new value chains globally in this uh, type of operation. Uh, so everybody's talking about it. Is Germany and the EU, are they all putting the money forward actually requiring this to be done? Um, yeah. There, there's the uh, uh, Green Deal from the European Commission. There's additional funding for, for hydrogen production and also developing hydrogen technologies in Europe. Um, there is an estimated 3 trillion market globally on green hydrogen to replace um, grey hydrogen, to replace fossil fuels uh, till 2050. And there are already 39 different programs globally on uh, hydrogen economy uh, from countries like Japan, United States, Europe. So it's, it's an um, accelerating uh, growth of the technology. Nice. Um, uh, is there something, no, I think something we, we forgot to mention? No, we, I think we covered the hot topics. Are you going to have like presentations here? Yeah, I will have a presentation on Thursday. Um, on the um, production technologies for fuel cells and green hydrogen. And uh, my colleague will speak about sustainable packaging uh, also in a talk on Thursday. Cool. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Thanks.